Hey everyone, this is Devyansh and I'm making a series of videos on writing, publishing and everything in between. Um, Today is a very fun topic, it's how do you write an action scene? Let's face it, who doesn't like some blood pumping, keep you off the edge of your seat, ape fights between boring descriptions of high castles in paradise in your novel? Action is fun, fight scenes, especially the ones that are beautifully crafted, can generate some much necessary pace for your book. I always ensure that there is at least one action sequence between two to three chapters in my novels to, you know, just keep the readers on their toes. Also, I start all my novels with an action scene. So it was a battle between two armies in Secret of the Himalayan Treasure and it was a gang war um, in Gangs of Bombay. Now, for this video, I'll be making various references to the fight scene from Gangs of Bombay. So if you have read the book or seen the previous video, um, it's going to be beneficial for you. Even if you haven't, you can still check this out and view it later to get the references. Um, writing an action scene is fun. It's one of the most anticipated things which I look for uh, while writing my book. Now, an action sequence cannot be a uh, mindless fist fist, right? There has to be a story. There has to be a purpose. There has to be a start, a middle and an end. So the number one thing that you have to keep in mind is the purpose. So the fight scene from Gangs of Bombay, uh, the purpose is clear. The protagonist, Sherlock, is going to hunt down uh, the rival gang leader, Abrash Ali Khan. The purpose is clear. The setting, that is the, your uh, second point which you have to keep in mind. Make your settings as interesting as you can because they can fuel your action scene. So it could be a nightclub or a quiet bistro's kitchen or an abandoned church whatever makes your story interesting the third thing is uh, my secret trick and i have not i don't think i've ever revealed this trick anywhere uh, but whenever i'm writing my action scenes i am using this all the time and i've been doing this for a very long time now so every time before i start writing an action scene i pick one song uh, and i play it on a loop for about a week and i make an action oriented trailer of it in my head okay before i start writing that so songs are not linear you know whatever song you choose they ha there will be ups and there will be down the highs and lows right and that is precisely what you need to inculcate in your action scenes as well so it cannot just be a guy throwing punches around right it has to be something more so for this fight scene from gangs of bombay i had picked the song whatever it takes by imagine dragons and I have also given a tribute to that in my book with a dialogue. Now, um, the beginning of the song is quiet, okay? And that is when Sherlock enters the nightclub and uh, with his gang. And I explain the setup, you know, the club, the crowd, the dome, the arena, the ramp around, uh, the def deafening music that is playing, the blinding lights all around. You, you get the gist, you know, you have thrown your readers into your world and you have described the nightclub with that. Um, also, the purpose is narrated in this initial part only that uh, Sherlock has to find a brush and kill him. It's a gang war. Now, as the music picks up pace, and this is the first act of your fight scene, so it has to be explosive. So, um, in the first act, Sherlock, um, you know, walks around the ramp and finds himself looking at a brush's confidant. And, uh, you know, with pace, there's this bullet work. Um, he is hitting people, the gang, uh, the opposite gang picks up on signals, they hit back. There is a crisscross of bullet fires. Everyone who is dancing is suddenly on the floor, they're covering their heads. You know, it's just an explosive scenario. Um, as the chorus hits for the first time in the song, that is when Sherlock puts a bullet in the head of um, Abrash's confidant. And that is the moment when we change the point of view and switch from Sherlock's point of view towards everyone else's in the club, um, towards his gang members who are busy wrecking havoc in the club. And here we'll have the fourth rule. After every bout of a close fist fight or gun fires, give your readers a breather. You know, too much of it will spoil the broth and it will just result in poor, incredibly poor reading experience. Um, so this was the start, this was the first act, and I match it with the chorus. So if you listen to the song, uh, whatever it takes, there are gonna be, the chorus is gonna arrive three times. And that's how I divided my scenes into that. So this was the first one. 
Then comes the middle part. And now as the chorus dies down and the song enters the second part, our fight also enters its second stage along with that. So this is when uh, one guy knocks on a metallic door, which is the dealer's room, and gets a bullet to his head. The door is open. Sherlock enters inside with his gang members. They're all slinging guns and they're rushing behind pillars. It's a room filled with smoke. There are red lights around. It's very, very low light, right? And they're hiding behind pillars. They're shooting guys. They're shooting shadows. They don't know what is going on. It's total, total chaos. And suddenly, there's this big, burly giant of a man who lands a punch at Sherlock and he loses it. Um, his gun gets thrown off his hands and he's just getting beaten up left and right by this giant and he is left helpless and this is the point where it, it comes to Sherlock's low point in the entire scene where he's getting beaten like anything don't always make your hero a superhero so that he's just punching 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 his way out have some low moments too right anyway so um, Sherlock's odds are less and he thinks he's about to get killed and that is when he spots a tequila bottle on the bar counter, picks it up, slams it on the giant's face and this is when the second chorus hits in the song. So this is the moment uh, when you show your readers something that is standing out. So imagine the scene, the giant running around helplessly. Um, he has been shattered, a uh, tequila bottle has been shattered on his face and Sherlock then lights a cigarette lighter and throws it on his face. So imagine the scene, there's red smoke everywhere and this giant is just running around, piercing um, the snow, uh, piercing smoke and his face is burning. And it can create a gritty experience which you want your readers to, which you use to draw your readers into your novel, your setup, because it is a gritty crime thriller, right? This is when the chorus ends, the second part ends and you arrive at the middle point. And that is when Sherlock narrates to his gang members to torch the dealer's room, which was set up in the second scene. And then after the middle act, um, we arrive to the final part of the song as well as the final part of the scene. So I described the nightclub uh, in the last scene because uh, it was fully loaded with punches and bullets till this point. So I wanted to keep the end a uh, bit on the lighter side, right? So it is where uh, I narrated the essential that readers know how everything has changed in a matter of minutes. So now when Sherlock is walking out, um, you know, there is the, the club, the, the entire scenario has changed. So um, no one is dancing anymore. You know, there are bodies lying on the floor, blood on the floor, dark from all the blinding lights. The music is still rocking, but the entire scene is just so much depressed. And... That is when he meets uh, Abrash Ali Khan who is brought down by his men, shoots him and the polo comes to a conclusion, the fight scene comes to a conclusion. So there was a start, there was a middle and an end. The fight scene wasn't mindless, there, there was a story in between, there was a journey and not everything was about just the bullets and the fists. There was a time for readers to breathe and place themselves in that nightclub thinking how they would feel, right? And that is essentially how you write an action scene. So just some more quick tips before I uh, conclude this video. Why choose a song? Because this has been my process that whenever I'm writing an action scene, I play a song on a loop in my head and I create a music video out of it. So if it's a two and a half minute song, you can get enough material for 10 to 15 pages worth of action scene. And it has always helped me. It makes your mind clear and it's a fun way to create your writing process. Um, it is my own process and I don't think many people out there do it but if you if you want to follow it you can if you have some other process you can go along with that too um, sixth thing is that it is a lesson learned uh, that I've learned from battle scenes of Game of Thrones always have a point of view okay so it was Sherlock's point of view in the prologue of Gangs of Bombay or it was Emperor Ashoka's point of view in the prologue of Secret of the Himalayan Treasure Always have a point of view. It cannot just be two armies clashing with each other. You have to pick up persons from each side and narrate how they are experiencing the battle or the fight. Um, another point is, it's my secret trick. Uh, write shorter sentences when it comes to, especially when it comes to the action scenes. So when the punches and the kicks are going around or the guns are going off, write shorter sentences. It builds momentum. It, you know, your prose is more crisper during that time and it keeps the pace and the suspense going on. It keeps the readers engaged. Another thing, be a little technical, you know, if you are 
having a gunfight, you should know the parts of the gun. So you should know what's a barrel, you should know what's a bayonet if it's set in uh, medieval times. And the last concluding point, which I would narrate as uh, narrating the fight scenes in third person is boring as hell. Um, first person, yes, sir, it's always good. So um, I hope this video has helped you guys. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you learned something from that video. Uh, I'm going to be posting more uh, writing related content on this YouTube channel. So um, put your suggestions in the comments about the things you would like me to make videos about. Also, if you like, if you're liking the, these videos, um, please share it with your friends, your family members, whoever is interested in writing and stuff. And yeah, help spread the word. Um, thank you. And I'll keep on coming up with some more awesome content. Bye.